Hello there, my name is Dries, and today we're having a look at what's new inside of ZBrush Core 2021. I skipped making a video on the previous release, the 2020 update, because like the year it's named after, it's not so great. Very minor things were added to it and it didn't change things enough to be worth making a video about it. But this year, they've added a few very good features that I've been asking for. It's still missing a key feature to be really good and ah, it's so frustrating. We could have had an awesome update, but instead we have the nearly there edition. So let's talk about the new features and then we'll talk about why I'm so mad with this version of ZBrush Core. First up is the addition of dynamic subdivisions. This is a modifier to the way ZBrush Core renders out the surface. It's a way to preview how your model will look subdivided without actually subdividing it. Um, it's great if you have a clean topology to work from. It's like uh, using a surface, surface modifier in other 3D apps, like uh, Turbo Smooth in Max, Subdivision sur Surface in Blender, and I think it's SubD in Maya. This allows you to preview your changes on a smooth surface without altering the model's topology. It's great if you want to preserve the original model, or it's great for stylized models, since it will always keep your model clean and simple looking, but super smooth and high res. You can hit the apply button to switch to a sub D workflow at any time if you feel you need more control than the low resolution topology can give you. You have a flat subdiv and a smooth subdiv setting to play around, and they can be used in combination to get the desired look you are aiming for. On a side note, it would be nice if Pixelogic didn't shove it in your face that ZBrush Core has become a paid demo of ZBrush every time you try to use something. So that's a great little addition, uh, worth looking into if you're trying to make clean looking stylized design. Since there are no Z modeler options inside of ZBrush Core, it requires you to use a model from outside of ZBrush Core to use it to its fullest, uh, like models you can buy in the links in the description. Shameless plug, let's move on before this gets any more awkward. In combination with dynamic subdivisions, in the same tab, they've added MicroPoly. It's a modifier to display geometry where there are verts on your model. So the more verts there are on your model, the smaller the micropoly elements will appear. It's great to make some fabric or complex texturing on the surface. Uh, this, I feel, has less value overall as it's not, uh, not useful to everyone all the time. But it's nice to have and to play with. Um, sculpting things like a chainmail is almost impossible, but you can, you can pull it off easily with MicroPoly, so that might come, might, might come in handy. And finally, the coolest addition, Z Remesher. Up to now, once you've started exploring your design with Sculptors Pro or DynaMesh, there wasn't an easy way to make a clean mesh and use subdivisions or the new dynamic subdivisions on it. Now, with the Z Remesher option, you can take a Dynamesh model and its crazy topology and turn it into a cleaner, usable topology that you can subdivide and sculpt on, allowing you to go back to a much lower poly count when you need to make big changes and jump to a very high density poly count when you need to make some fine details. For instance, all the heads that ship with ZBrush Core are Dynameshed. So now, if we want to start using one of those, but want to use a subdivision workflow, we can in a few steps. We load the head we want to use, head on to the Z Remesher tab, click on the annoying pop-up, and then we run Z Remesher. And it's going to give us a model of around 10,000 polygons. And that's fine. It's not meant to give you animation topology, so for sculpting, this is fine. Uh, there is another option next to the Z Remesher button that says half. Turning it on will set the target amount of polys to be 
half of the model's current amount of polygons. So if your model is, say, 50K, it will tar target around 25K. And you can use that to your advantage. Uh, if the default 10K that ZeroMesh sure gives you is too much, uh, you can turn the half option and zero mesh it again to 5k and you can do it over and over until you reach the amount of polygons you're targeting uh, around 1k is as low as you should target so it's great anything that we can prototype with dynamesh can be remeshed and switched to a sub d workflow and that's where the last thing i feel is missing would make this so much better and much more useful. Uh, there are no options to project your models to other subtools. That means if I made some good progress on the sculpt using Dynamesh, I can't save that work. Um, I can't transfer that all the things I've done to the new clean topology. And jumping from a 300,000 polygon Dynamesh to a 10k model, details are bound to be lost. So the overall proportions and landmark would be preserved somewhat, but anything more detailed would have been lost. They've given us half a solution and it's so close to being awesome if they would add the option to reproject our subtools. Ziri Mesh is a great step and Though they have these annoying pop-ups to tell you it's limited, it's fine. The only limit is what you that we can't transfer our previous work back to the new model. And it's so close, it's so close to be really good. Um, I wish Pixel Logic would give ZBrush Core some love instead of being the first payment towards the full version of ZBrush. To be clear, ZBrush is awesome. It's the greatest piece of software I ever bought. Uh, I love Pixel Logic, and I want them to have another great success with ZBrush Core, and it's so close. So close. Uh, fingers crossed for the next update. Uh, we'll find workarounds and tips to get the most out of ZBrush Core in the meantime to make sure you do the most you can with the tool you have. But until then, uh, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.